so yeah hello there dear lovely beloved human friend friend your friend you're a friend you're my friend all right we're friends we well we have to move on from that video and I think it's time for us to talk about those kind of creatures, okay? That kind of creature that keeps me on my nerves sometimes. We have to talk about music critics. Or you know what? Let's not talk about music critics, all right? Let's just skip all that because who cares? Life is too short to get in, into discussions or whatever, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's talk about music. Listen, the thing is that music doesn't represent anything at all. Like, it's a non-representational form of art or something you can really say like what happens in movies like say this movie is stupid the world will just simply save the main character at the end he's not badass he's just unlikely to a rational degree and even then <laughs> so that's the thing if i'm going to put a drone into loot that is 65 hours long in my power pop j-rock album i can't just freaking do it because music doesn't follow logical progression i mean in the sense that there is no main character or plot or things in general so it's not like we start with a thriller and we end with a black comedy at the end or something <laughs> Everything what I was saying made sense of my head until now. What the hell is going on? Yeah, yeah, I mean, lyrics and concept albums with stories are a different matter. Please, we will get there in due time. In movies, you, I mean, there is like some expectation about the plot. <laughs> Every time I give an example, some other example in my head comes up to contradict my ex my statement, <laughs> and it's getting me insane. I mean, okay, just follow me, follow me along, follow me along by now. All right. If imagine if I decided to make a post rock song in my new metal rap rock album. If I'm all into new metal, I would say, what is this? Dumb, stupid, slow, getting nowhere song on the other record. But if I'm into bus rock, I will say something like, What the fuck? Lim Biscuit made a bus rock song? Even before Godspeed, you even released their first record? What? But still, if that happened to me, I, felt, I guess I would say it was pretty cool. Oh, I have a better example. In music, in, I mean, in movies, if you like leave like a clue or, or something about the plot, you will have them like resolve it or give a payoff for that. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Okay, okay, let's take it. Let's take it from another angle, all right? Music is cool because we know we can like understand the exact same thing or a similar thing about something, but you know, still have like opposite reactions to it. It's like, uh, like for example, if I if I play an album that that sounds like a splashed canvas or something, some people will say this sounds like splashed canvas. Screw you. But but other people will say this sounds like a splashed canvas. This is the greatest thing I ever heard in my life. So, yeah. what I'm trying to say is that music criticism is like a foolish concept because there is no way to write music objectively. <laughs> it's not for one. 
Oh shit. <laughs> Let's go one by one. What if music is, I don't know, very repetitive? If something is really repetitive, you can really say it's bad because of it. Because to some people, making music that is repetitive is what makes it good. You, you can have your own albums with songs that are 30, 50, 70, 1000 minutes long and they are consistent and repeating loops with the most minimal duration. And you can evolve from that as well. We, we can add some sense of progression little by little and you know, a song like changing the frequencies slowly or adding song harmony slowly, slowly, and then you have minimalism or something like that, or whatever. You can do thousands of variations in how to execute music that is strictly about repeating yourself. And that's what is great about it. What if music is that is, I don't know, too noisy? What if you don't like something that has a lot of noise and you can't distinguish anything at all from what you're hearing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some people will be up for that sensation. Pure noise made with just instruments? You have it. Noise made with electronics? With no logical sense of progression of musical cadence? You have it. The most cacophonic, headache inducing frequencies that might cause you to see if you listen to them once? You have it. Even if you call this noise or not music, that is not music, that is just sound. Even if you say, this is not my hyperdimensional epic hardcore funk band, this is just a sellout, there will be people that like the cheesy, poppy stuff. It is what it is. We can't change what people think, okay? We just can't change what people like. Music is not like movies where you can say <laughs> That person is dumb That raw man's drama No woman is going to act like you like that ever You're deluding yourself <laughs> You're deluding yourself <laughs> <laughs> you can say, whoa, this person is dumb for liking this pop song, or this person is so dumb for liking this array of noise, because uh, 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 in the real world, you won't find a noise that will act like that towards you, ever. <laughs> you just can't possibly win. There is no objective way to say something is better than something because with music, our perception of the same thing is really variable. It can represent a lot of different things. <laughs> Let's talk about the different ways that you can describe music. We have fast and slow. Yeah, I mean, indeed, you can say that something is fast or slow. You can get faster or slower about something. But just as you might like fast songs, you will probably find slow songs that suit your fancy as well. We all need different speeds in our life, you know? We have high and low. So it's, I mean, I guess notes wise, you can say something has a higher frequency than others. But hey, I mean, it just depends. Do you like tinnitus or do you not like tinnitus? Just it's up for preference. My little little like yes, the Virtuals and non-virtuals. You will find people that say, "Hey, this is so virtuous that it sickens me." Just uh. uh, uh. Uh, um, just toying around with fireworks and doing pyrotechnics. Where is the heart? Where is the heart? Are you a machine? Do you have no emotions? But again, that's the thing. Enjoy music whose sole purpose is doing interesting thing at a 
theoretical level, it's not really wrong either. It can be fun as well as saying, Yo, that 9-8 syncopated augmented diminished rim chord beat is just insane! It's just like a party trick! And they won't be wrong either since later, you know, having fun. You could also color both the virtuous fanatics people and the people who want something emotional and human. You can be really cheesy and have a lot of art and still be trashed away because you were the first prog metal band they heard and now they're feeling self-conscious about liking it. People will trash you away anyway, so what's the point? What's the point? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's backwards, it's backwards. What do you want me to do? Like, wear it upside down? <gasps> loud and, or not loud? We have brick walling and stuff like that. Okay, yeah, but I mean, you get the idea. Some people will like the brick walling. You can say, hey, it feels as if the band is popping up of the record trying to push away. And other people will say, <laughs> I can hear the frequencies. Where's the nuance? Where is the nuance? So yes, yeah, some people like it. Some people won't like it. Most of us humans don't even notice they were in their lives. So yeah, you get the idea. We can go on so on and so forth, but I'm writing the script with a flu and I just want to go to sleep. <laughs> Let's move to the last one. Okay, originality. Originality in my opinion is the only criteria that I feel called objectively applied to music. <laughs> Please, <laughs> bear with me first, okay? You might say, hey, originality is also subjective. I could be not familiar with all the styles of these artists is making, I find their music refreshing and original. Okay, I get your point, but Wait, I need to scroll down the page. Here you go. Actually, I'm just. First, time is not cyclical, right? Time goes in mm. one way only, right? I mean, at least on Earth, by now. History is the only thing that doesn't change based on your perspective of it. For some reason, I felt a disturbance on the forest when I said that. Anyway, let's settle that perceptions of history can change, or the facts that people save or whatever can change, but not history itself. So when, you know, someone makes a new idea in music, that means they are the first person to make that idea. So if you want to say something that's better than something else, you can say that it's more original than the other thing you're comparing it. In that way, it does have more merit than the thing you're comparing it to. Probably. But hold it right there, poster! Because this kind of discourse only matters to nerds and historians. Even when you play music and you do the same thing that your dad did, every day, that doesn't mean it can be something special to the people you play to, that it, represent, that it doesn't mean that it doesn't represent something special to you. The only factor where history and music will actually matter is for people in 200 years that will be looking to all the music from this time and checking their records and saying, hey, this person made this thing before this other person. How curious. So who do you want to play for? The people who are right here, right now, alive with you, that you can share experiences with? Or the people who will be alive in 200 years and, you know, won't even know you because you are nine feet underground? And even then, innovation is not always the answer. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on! What if I make a really cool thing? Like a really cool thing. And then I move on to something else. What? No! What if I want more of that thing? Did you change it? 
The palace was already perfect. People will say, people, people will say, you can always listen to the original one more time. But here's the thing, my brain is kind of dumb. And there are only so many times my neurons can make connections around the same patterns to produce dopamine with the same notes. So, yeah. So there will be artists, bands, people that will focus on doing the same variations on the same sounds just with different melodies all of their lives. And that is a good thing because there will be people like me that will keep begging them to make more of the same thing. If we think about it, what the hell does originally even mean in a way? Is it, I don't know, rocket science? Is it doing an incredibly inexplicable thing that comes up from nowhere? Listen, but I can't really explain how the world works, but I can explain how my brain works, kinda. My brain is kinda done of coming up with that kind of thing, and I usually can't come up with something new that wasn't already related to something I already did or related to something I already knew or was familiar with. Now if I say oh artist derivative, you might get a little angry, rightfully so, but if I say that originality is about recontextualizing all ideas and reinterpreting them properly, suddenly originality is not so scary. The way that you can really be original is to combine more and more ideas. If you take the sound of two artists and combine them together, people will say, hey, they sound like a blend of thing A and thing B. If you mix five to seven things, people will say, hey, this artist sounds like all these artists put in a blender. And if you mix 10 to 30, 50, 100 things or whatever. Well, good luck getting a cohesive idea out of that. That doesn't sound like someone sapping through channels. Sometimes it works and people will say, hey, this sounds like something I never heard before. See what you did there? What you did was diffusing the original sauce so much that it just became unrecognizable. In that scenario, you will have more music. The only problem you will get is trying to find someone that is actually into the thing itself. So yeah, well, cataloging what music is original or not can be fun. It doesn't explain how great it can be to a person. And as we saw the previous video, or you know, the previous train record recording I did before, if there's something I learned about life, it's that there is a 50% chance of losing up something if you are using math. If I read things, historically, it's because I find it fun. You know, it's like saying, hey, this sound came before this sound, or this other sound evolved into this sound. It's a very nice way of finding the natural progression of this in the world, because it's interesting and, and fun, because I'm a nerd too. I so maybe, I don't know, maybe we can entertain the thought and make a quick fear of ratings. So 100 points! Music so original, so damn original innovative that change all music cultures everywhere, forever and ever. Every single person of earth in every continent and country. I, I really haven't seen a record that has done that yet, so let's just keep it to one music culture or whatever that is. And yeah, let's change the rating from 90 points to 100 points. Two or more subgenres came out from this album. We can say it's the 90 points to 100 points category. We all know that 100 points album is, and that album is The Pub and Underground and Nico. Probably. <laughs> I really haven't heard that album in years. Yeah, I know what you're saying. You could also say that writing music that is original but wasn't influential to anybody is a foolish thing. I wish you write music that is really influential even if they weren't that original. But hey, we have to play Tales Advocate somehow. What am I supposed to do? Not? You're insane. 80 points to 89 points. Music that is so original. So original. So original that can spawn like a new subgenre or 
genre based on those ideas. Like for example, Loveless with you guys. It is a small subculture, a small genre, but I will say it does fit. From 70s, from 79 points, we have music that is so original, so original that gave up a new interpretation of a subgenre or genres into a new subgenre. Or maybe gave ideas so unique, so unique that came up with a new interpretation of the genre from 60 to 69 points music that is so original so original to the point that it adds like a couple of new or refreshing ideas were a completely living and established genre we added grunge to our prog metal band you can say hey this sounds like 6 to 10 ideas we packaged into a new idea. I know what you're asking. What is a new idea? Well, I was thinking maybe a new idea is an idea that can be replicated on its own. If I like can take your sound and replicate it and it still sounds like your sound and not the sounds that became before you, that means it's a new idea. Kind of. From 50 to 59 points. Music that is slightly original and gives a new interpretation of around four to five ideas, like variations of albums made by the same band. Hey, we did the same album as before, but this time we are using vegetables instead of drums. Okay, so we have from 40 to 49 points reinterpretations of two or three pre existing ideas, like saying, Hey, we made an electro pop album. The same exact pop album as before, but this time the, we are using different synths. It's not the same new ideas made by the band, but ideas that are already staples of a genre or subgenre, just with a slight variation with a little spunk or something new. It's not a variation of an already made deconstruction but an already no variation of a well-established trope. Yeah, from here we start to get into the accidentals category. From 30 to 39 points will be music or recordings that are the same as previous recordings, but have different structures of or evoke different emotions and look forward to represent different things. From 20 to 29 points, Stuff that is so similar, but they simply sound different to production differences, instruments used, mixing, or small details that you might not notice. Uh, from 10 to 19 points. Could be music that represents the same music and emotions that the ones they are just spirited by, but you know, just use different melodies, so they just sound different just because, because they have a different anatomy. And if you look them apart, part by part, they are, you know, fundamentally different. But when you look at the bigger picture, they might give you the same sensation, feelings, ideas, or interpretation of something. So, buddy, here is where we can breathe a sigh of relief. Because no matter how much you try, it's really difficult to have the same production as another album. There are just so many variables in the recording, mixing, it's just really, really likely that you will sound the same ever, ever, ever. From zero to nine points, we have music that is so similar, so similar, that you will need some sort of element to distinguish it from each other. Like maybe it's a remaster this time and the drums this time are not made by a drum machine, but they use actual drums or I don't know, whatever. So yeah, for that you can be sure that there is probably no record in the world that sounds the same, even if you try. It might be hard to get 100 points, but I can bet your ass it's a lot more harder to get zero points. You just can't get zero points in something. You just can't sound exactly the same as something else. You can. Don't try. Don't try. And come to think of it, doing a record that is absolutely non-original in the slightest will be a very original idea. 
Hmm. Yeah, now when I think about it, with the perspective of the historical scale laid out and everything, 20 points for the incident sounds kind of harsh. But don't worry, I already know how many points I can give to it now. I give it 33 points out of 100. You know, now that I think about it, I feel I have described my tears with the impact the records have rather than the ideas they contain. So influence rather than originality. This rating system is garbage. <laughs> Listen, I'm a fool, alright? I never went to a rock critic music school, so I won't pretend I have listened to every single main recording played in every country. A record is unoriginal, or if releases ideas from other records you know, you don't need to hear that from me. So yeah, I don't really pretend to have the expertise of a music critic or a historian in this subject. It's just that you know I spend a lot more time listening to music than actually do. doing music. I hope that you watch me not because you find me informational or because you think I have reliable data, but because you find me charming or cute or, or, or funny too, I guess. But the rating system, man. The rating system kinda sucks. So yeah, what I want to say is that I want to write as many things as possible in a positive manner. If nobody's a bad artist, that means I can't be a bad artist either. <laughs> Alright, we didn't talk about lyrics, right? But this video is already way too long. Listen, I'm in love with the idea of music as a non-representational art. Sometimes, you know, sometimes I decide to check the lyrics and realize that they deals. are actually pretty cool. I see them and say, hey, that's cool. To cover the sock where the flat line had spread, the kiosk in my temporal lobe is shaped like Rosalind Carter. He says what we are thinking. So, yeah, that's what I wanted to say about music. It's original, it's not original, and writing stuff is fun, but don't take it too seriously because you're not making things fun for anybody. <sighs> I should have come up with a catchphrase by now. Yay. Peace, peace. Yep. <laughs> that's, that's not it. <laughs> Why is it so hard? You know what? You know what? You know what? Let's leave that for future me, I guess. Good night. <laughs>